Hey everybody, it's Vault Fox, and today I'm going to be answering one of my most asked questions here on YouTube, Instagram, basically any of my social medias. How do you print your helmets out and what is the best way to print a helmet out? If you've been following this channel for a few months, you've seen me print out a lot of helmets. And every single time I've printed them, I've been printing them out in multiple slice pieces like my Captain Rex helmet, as well as my Clone Trooper helmets, where I print those out in three pieces, and my Mandalorian helmets, which I'll usually split up into two with a dome in the bottom part. And I still recommend this method, especially for people that are just getting started out with 3D printing. However, I do understand that the actual act of slicing up a file for printing can be a little bit challenging for people, and let's be real, maybe you just don't want to deal with bondoing another seam on your helmet when you know that you're going to have to put bondo all over the helmet and sand that down flush. So maybe you just want to print it out in one piece. For those of you that want to learn how to print a helmet in one piece, or if you're just curious of how I do it, let's go up to my office and I'll load up Kira for you guys and show you how it's done. It's pretty simple, trust me. If I can do it, you can do it. So to start off, I'm opening up Kira, which is a free slicing software that will take your STL files and it will convert it into a type of G-code. And that G-code is what your printer will then read in order to actually print the physical file on your printer. It's free to download and free to use, and I will link it down in the description for you guys to grab if you don't already have it. Once you have Kira open up, you're just going to want to import the file that you're looking to print. And in my case, I'm using a Mandalorian helmet from Galactic Armory. I'll also link that file down below for you guys. And I'm printing this out for my husband's Mandalorian cosplay. I'm not cosplaying Mando. As much as I would love to cosplay season one Mando, I think that I can only handle one Mandalorian cosplay for right now. Now when you import your file, it may show up like this on your screen where it's kind of grayed out and has like yellow lines and things like that. And what that means is your current orientation of your file is not going to slice correctly or not at all because all the attributes are not on the build plate itself. And to fix that, I'm going to go over to the toolbar on the left of Kira and the third option down will give you the option to rotate your model. I usually rotate my models about 90 or so degrees to the side, kind of like this. And once your entire file is showing up as yellow, you know that it's seated on the build plate and will slice correctly. Once you've rotated your file, you're going to want to get this print as flat to the bed as possible. And this specific file, as you can see under the bottom, it's not completely flat all around the bottom and that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that rotate tool and uncheck that snap rotation box. That's very important. So. It will allow me to try and rotate this so that the bottom is about as flat to the build plate as I can possibly get it. Don't worry if the bottom of your print doesn't all touch the build plate because when you slice a file in Cura with auto-generated supports and the Everywhere options checked, it will build up supports from the build plate to those parts of the model within a certain overhang angle. The main problem with printing your helmet like this in this orientation is the amount of material and the amount of time that this print is going to take. Because whenever I go in and slice this model, you'll see that it's going to take us over three and a half days to print this and it's going to use up over 1300 grams of filament. And that is a lot of filament. That for reference is about a roll and a third of filament. Most of that is going towards all of that support that's in the middle of your helmet. And you don't need that support. Because with the way that 3D printing works and the building upon the layer beneath it, as the print goes up, it will be self-supported as it builds the dome. So you don't need that middle support. So you're probably wondering, how do you get rid of that center support material? And to do that, we're going to download a plugin for Cura and it's free. Go to the top right of the Cura program and you're going to want to click on Marketplace. From there, you're going to scroll down under the Plugins tab and you should find something called Custom Supports. So you're going to click on that and whenever you're prompted, you're going to install it and then you're going to need to close out Cura and reload it. Once you have this plugin installed, we're going to just open up Cura and we're going to click on this button. It kind of looks like a little bunch of stairs and you'll see a couple options here. You can choose to make your supports a block shape or a cylindrical shape. To be honest, I only ever use blocks. And you'll also see a checkbox labeled drop to build plate and wider base. Drop to build plate means exactly what it sounds like, meaning wherever you place a block, it will then extend that block down to the build plate. You'll want to have this checked whenever you're adding supports along the bottom of your print so that it doesn't move your model up and down. And having this option checked also gives you a good visual of your supports before you slice. The wider base checkbox again means exactly what it sounds like. Wherever you place a block, the support is just going to have a wider base on the bottom. And to be honest, I don't typically use this function, but definitely play around with it. You might like it and it may work out for your models better. And then last is the size of your actual support blocks. You can make these support blocks as big or as small as you like. I tend to use a 10 millimeter size block all around the bottom of my helmets because it usually is enough to encapsulate the bottom and give it a good foundation and seven millimeter size blocks for all of the other supports that I put around the helmet. Adding a support block is 
super simple. All you're going to have to do is click on the part of the model where you'd like the support to go. And there you go, it's supported now. If you place a block in the wrong spot, deleting it is as easy as selecting that block and hitting your delete button, or you can always use a trusty undo button if it was recent enough. So now that you have a support block, where the heck do you put them? So I have a little bit of experience in knowing where to place my supports on helmets just from trial and error and having printed a lot of pieces in the past. But if you're brand new to this and you just have no idea where to start, you're going to want to click on your model and view it from the bottom of the model. And you're going to see a lot of parts on it that are red. So these red parts are where you should concentrate on putting most of your support. But note that some of these red spots actually don't require support. So in my opinion, if you want to support all of the parts that are red aside from the middle dome, that's usually a good place to start. For this Mandalorian helmet, I'm putting supports all along the bottom of the model so that these parts of the model that are not touching the build plate will be properly supported, as well as placing supports in and around the ear cap, along the back vent, and the back lip. I'm also going to go and add some supports along the visor opening and some of the small little bits on the detail on the front visor. When you're finished placing all of your supports, you're going to want to go back under print settings and uncheck the auto support checkbox. Because if you don't do this, Kira is going to default back to doing those auto generated supports and basically all of what we've done is essentially for nothing. It's important to note though that if you have that box unchecked, you can still adjust things like the support infill under this heading and it will translate to your custom supports, but you must have that checkbox unchecked so that it's actually going to pull in your custom supports that you put on the model. Once that's unchecked, I'm going to slice my print and as you can see with these custom supports, the Mando helmet is now only going to take two and a half days to print. And the important thing is that it's only going to use about 880 grams worth of filament. That is a lot of filament. That's basically half of a helmet that I can then now use for my next print. And that's awesome. So now all we have to do is export this to our SD card, plug it into our printer and let it go for a few days. And after that, we've got our own finished Mandalorian helmet. I wanted to show you guys how it looked in actual reality as opposed to the 3D print software. And as you can see, all of the supports that I place are exactly where we put them on the model and everything was supported nicely. And we got this print done in one piece. And that's all that there is to it. Now you can go and print all of your helmets out in one piece to your heart's content. I hope that this video helped you out in some way. And if you have any other questions, as always, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. And I would also like to know what your guys' favorite 3D modeling software is or 3D slicing software. I personally only ever use Cura and a little bit of Fusion 360. And there was an iPad app that I used too. I just don't care. I can't remember right now. I'll probably put it right here. And if you would like to see how I finish this Mandalorian helmet in the future, make sure you're subscribed for that video that will hopefully be coming out as always guys thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys next time bye what yes aries what are you doing and i'm going to be printing that for my i almost said for my mando's my mando's husband's cosplay <laughs> that's not correct <laughs>